Good evening, everyone. In the wake of what happened in Shagalik, Alaska, the murders of a couple allegedly by their own son, troopers say it's difficult responding sometimes to remote communities that don't have formalized law enforcement already in place. Channel 2's Samantha and Gayak explains the community did have a village public safety officer at one point. Well, Mike and Rebecca, Alaska State Troopers say according to their records, Shagaluk did have a station VPSO 12 years ago, but then they moved to another village. The Shagaluk City Council and Shagaluk Native Tribe also issued a press release saying they haven't had a health aid in more than two years. In remote communities, enforcing the rules can be a challenge. Probably the most difficult thing in trying to find VPSOs or people who actually reside there are uh, individuals who are very familiar with the folks, but at the same time have to take action sometimes against their own family members. There are currently 86 village public safety officers serving in the state, but they have the funding to have a total of 121. And there are rural Alaska communities that don't have any form of permanent police presence. They need to expand it. They need to expand more troopers, more VPSOs, um, make people feel safe. Just make them safe, but make them feel safe as well. That village decides whether or not they want to have a VPSO. Um, so in s some cases it's proactive, the nonprofits reach out, um, but in a lot of cases the villages have to express that interest. Lieutenant Andrew Merrill, who works for the Alaska State Troopers and runs the VPSO program, says a VPSO was based in the community of Shagaluk in 2002. But when that person moved to another village, the community didn't express a desire to have another one. In the wake of a tragedy that rocked the community overnight, with the deaths of two beloved community members, troopers say one of the toughest challenges is getting to remote locations. In some places we have pilots who are certified to fly at night, in other places we don't. Um, and so sometimes we may have an aircraft, but we may not have a pilot that is certified to fly at night. So our night response is going to be non-existent. Weather can also slow their efforts. When you live in a community uh, that's not connected by a road and you live out in remote areas, um, unfortunately that's, that's a, a factor that you have to, to understand is that um, if you don't have a VPSO that lives in your community or a VPO or a, a TPO, um, there are some risks that are, go along with that. Um, and it may be several hours for a trooper to respond. In some cases it could be a day or two. And for some rural Alaska communities, that means when there's no police officer for hundreds of miles away, the policing is left up to them. And Alaska State Troopers say a meeting was held last week to finalize its requirements to train VPSOs to carry firearms, including background and psychological checks. The first group is anticipated to begin the process.